Hey guys, it's Eric with LeatherSeats.com. In today's tech tip video, I'm going to be installing our aftermarket seat ventilation system in a 2015 Chevy Silverado. Ventilated seat technology is pretty much par for the course now on late model luxury vehicles. Fortunately for those of us living in hotter climates, it's also becoming more common as an available option on mid-level cars and trucks. That said, making the walk from the base model vehicle up to the fully loaded version with this option can be extremely expensive. In the case of the Silverado and its fancier cousin the GMC Sierra, ventilated seats are available, but only if you take an $8,000 options hike. For the Silverado, the LTZ is the only trim level available with seat ventilation, and for the Sierra, you have to purchase either an SLT or a Denali package truck. We've been offering an incredible aftermarket carbon fiber seat heating system for well over a decade now. During that same period, we've looked at quite a few different seat ventilation systems, but we've never been happy with how they install. Most of them require that we actually make modifications to either the seat frame or the seat foam or both that could affect structural integrity. The system we're looking at today was developed with the same technology used in the best OEM seat ventilation systems, and it has some innovative engineering that make it much more universally compatible. All right, guys, we're out in the installation bay. We're about to get started working on the seat, but first I want to unbox the seat ventilation system and show you what's included. Now that we've done the inventory on the seat ventilation kit, we're going to move on to removing the factory upholstery. All right guys, on the factory backrest there, you saw me take off the upholstery without doing any damage to it. We could reinstall that upholstery down the road if we wanted to. Unfortunately, when you do it that way, you actually have to carefully pry open the pinch clip listings that are embedded in the foam, and there's always a chance that some of them break. The better way to do it, especially if you don't care about saving the factory upholstery, is to actually cut the listings off, and I'm gonna show you that here on this bottom cushion. From here we have to figure out where we're going to place the actual air distribution pad. If we place it too far back on the cushion, we're going to cover up two horizontal attachment listings. If we place it too far forward, we're going to cover up two. So there's really only one good spot on this Silverado cushion, and that's right here. I am going to have to delete this particular attachment point, but it's really not going to affect the cover fitment or the look by the time we're done. Once I have the pad position marked on the foam, I'm going to go ahead and profile it so that the pad, when it's actually installed, will sit flush with the factory foam height. There's a couple ways to do that, including using a router. I'm going to show you the way to do it that doesn't require that you have a router or even know how to use one. All right, I've wrapped the razor blade with electrical tape exposing about 3 eighths of an inch of the blade itself. That's because the pad is about 3 eighths of an inch thick, and I don't want to cut any deeper into this foam than about 3 eighths of an inch.
All right, I've got the seat foam profile on both the bottom cushion as well as the backrest. That's ready to accept the distribution pad. The goal here is that the pad would actually fit flush with the rest of the seating surface on the foam. We want to make sure that we're not going to see or feel that pad once the upholstery is installed. Keep in mind, I did use an air angle grinder to smooth out this section. That's not really required. I could have left it fairly rough and you wouldn't have been able to see the difference. From here though, we have to figure out where we're going to mount the TED unit. Ideally, you want to place it right in the center of the distribution pad, but that's not always an option. And really, we have to put the foam back on the seat frame to figure out where exactly we're going to be able to mount it. All right, I've got one of the two TED devices that's included with our kit. Uh, TED actually stands for a thermoelectric device. There's a bunch of other names for this device, including a thermoelectric cooler or a thermoelectric heat pump, but basically they all operate on the same principle, which is leveraging the Peltier effect. Uh, inside the TED, you have two semiconductors that are separated by two junctions. When we run a 12 volt electrical current through the semiconductors, one of the junctions naturally begins to pull heat from the other junction, which creates a heat differential. From there, when we actually start to blow air from the centrifugal blower through the intake side, whenever the current is run one way, you have hot coming out of this exhaust port and cool coming out of this exhaust port. When we flip the current, you're going to have cool coming out of this exhaust port and then hot air being exhausted here. So basically, I'm going to take this TED and figure out where I can actually mount it on the seat foam. I do have to look for a place that's not going to be impeded by the seat frame or the springs. And in the case of the Silverado, that looks like there's really only one spot, which is about right here. All right, once I've pushed the vent tube through the hole that I cut in the foam, I want to basically trim that down to the appropriate length to mount inside of the distribution pad. Generally, that's going to be somewhere between a half an inch and three quarters of an inch. You definitely want to make sure that you don't cut yourself too short, though. All right, before I actually mark and cut the hole in the distribution pad to attach the vent tube on this side, I want to go ahead and attach it securely to the TED. I could do that with super glue or with silicone, but I actually like attaching it mechanically using stinger screws. All right, I don't want to use the full length of the stinger screw here, so I'm going to go ahead and clip the tip. I'll just use a pair of dikes to do that. All right, now that the TED is in its final position on the bottom cushion here, I need to go ahead and mark the distribution pad so that I can cut a hole to attach it to the vent tube. I'll be cutting the hole in the distribution pad with the razor blade. I start with a pretty conservative hole because you can always make the hole a little bit bigger. It's tough to make it smaller. All right, once I've cut the basic hole, I want to check to see if the hole size is compatible with the actual vent tube. In this case, it looks like it's just about right. It's also in the right position. So from here, I want to attach the distribution pad to the seat foam. You can do that just using the double-sided sticky tape that's provided on the pad. I go ahead and use some contact adhesive as well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and spray that here. I'm going to spray that on the foam and get that ready to attach. 
Uh, before I actually put it down though, I'm also gonna use some silicone to seal up between the vent tube and the distribution pad. All right, from here I need to attach the centrifugal blower to the TED. I'm going to cut another piece of vent tube to the appropriate length to attach that underneath the seat. The centrifugal blower on this kit includes three attachment flanges, one here at the front, one on the side, and one at the back. The one here at the back is actually going to be in our way on this particular application, so I'm just going to cut it off. I'm going to attach using these two other flanges. Also, the TED has its own attachment flanges, one on this side and one on this side, but I can't attach those to the seat frame yet because I actually have to take the entire foam cushion off to install the upholstery. We'll be coming back to attach that at a later time. All right, from here I've got to figure out where I'm going to mount the control module for the system. But first I'm going to plug in the wiring harness as well as the leads that go to the TED and the centrifugal blower here on the cushion. That's going to help me figure out where I can mount the control module on this application so that I can keep my wiring clean and tidy. One thing to keep in mind is that you do need to do some testing to make sure that there's not going to be any conflict in any function of the seat based on where you mount all these aftermarket parts. All right, now that I've got the hardware mounted on the bottom cushion and some basic wiring management done, it's time to start working on the backrest. The process is basically the same as mounting the hardware on the cushion. The only variation is that we do have to run a vent tube to exhaust the waste air coming off of the TED, which we'll get to here in a minute. All right, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of support for this centrifugal blower here. There's really nowhere for me to attach it effectively. So I'm gonna use some metal strap to actually create a support for the centrifugal blower. All right, so just like the cushion, we have the TED mounted through the foam to the distribution pad. We have the centrifugal blower mounted to the TED. 
But unlike the cushion, this is not an open air environment. This is a closed back, and we don't want the ambient air that's in the backrest to be heated up by the waste air coming out of the TED. So we're gonna use another vent tube to basically exhaust all of that hot air. We're gonna run that down and out the bottom of the backrest foam, and then we will install this bezel to give everything a nice finished look. I've got the seat ventilation system fully installed on this passenger side bucket seat, but before I install the upholstery, I wanna go ahead and make sure the system is working properly. To do that, I've hooked up the power in the ground to a 12 volt power supply so that we can go ahead and test the system. Our system comes with a really nice looking rocker switch to control both the heating and cooling functions. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the bottom side here. As you can see, it defaults to high cool, but it also has a medium setting as well as a low setting. And if I hit it again, it turns the system off. The heating function has the same settings. You've got high, medium, and low. And if you hit it again, it turns off. I'm gonna hit the high cool function. If you listen, you can actually hear the centrifugal blowers blowing not just air, but cool air up through these distribution pads, which is forced through the reticulated foam and up finally through the perforated leather inserts on your seats. All right, so we've tested the system. As you guys can see in here, everything's working perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and get started installing the upholstery so we can get everything back in the truck. All right, now that we've got the upholstery installed and fitting the way we want to, I'm gonna go ahead and get the buckets back in the truck so we can start working on the wiring. All right, so the seats are back in the vehicle. Everything's wired up and working properly. I did wanna take a little time to do an overview on how we wire the system. It's basically the same as our carbon fiber seat heaters. I will admit that the wiring harness included with this kit is fairly daunting looking, but it really just funnels down to two wires, a power and a ground. If you give the system power and ground, it's gonna run all day. 
That said, you really don't want to wire it up to constant power because if you did forget to turn it off after exiting the vehicle, it would drain your battery. To solve that problem, we wire up the system with a 5-pin 30-amp relay. This type of 5-pin relay is super common in automotive wiring, so there's a ton of resources on the web that'll show you how they work. Just to cover the basics though, there are 5 pins, they're labeled 85, 86, 30, 87, and 87A. To start wiring the relay, the first thing I have to do is find a trigger wire. That's a wire that only receives power when the ignition is in the on position. Those are usually found under the dash behind the steering column. Once I've found that wire, I tap into it and I run it to pin 86. With the ignition trigger wire run to the relay, I then have to find a ground. I can usually find a good solid factory ground underneath the kick panel on the driver's side. Once found, I'll run a wire from there up to pin 85. With the relay set to run power to the system only with the ignition on, I now have to find constant power. I can do that either by running a wire directly through the firewall to the battery, or in the case with electric seats, I can usually tap into the power in the main electrical harness. Once I've found that, I have to run a wire from there up to pin 30. The last thing I have to do to wire up the relay is to run a power wire from pin 87 up to each of the seat ventilation systems using the included inline fuse. With the system wired up properly, each of the seat ventilation units is only going to be able to be operated when the ignition is in the on position. In the end, after looking at all the options, I decided to mount the switches inside the center console. As you can see, we've achieved an OEM fit and finish. I can tell you from experience that cutting the holes for the switches is one of the more difficult and tedious parts of the install. To make my life easier, I actually created a switch hole cutting template, which I used to mark and cut the holes. We're also including the 5 pin 30 amp relay with every purchase, so that you guys don't have to go and source that on your own. I hope you guys have found this video to be helpful. If you do have any questions, you can always call us toll free at 866 new seat or you can email our customer service department at sales at leatherseats.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.